Hello, Jason here from Septic Tank TV. And in today's live broadcast, I'm gonna answer a really, really popular question. And that is, how on earth, right, do you work out the size of your drainage field? Well, it's a lot simpler and easy, easier than this looks, right? Now, this particular formula that I'm about to show you is specifically designed for soakaways in which you're going to use like a herringbone type system made up of perforated pipes and gravel etc all right um, if you're looking for the calculation to work out the size of the area of your soakaway for septic tank soakaway crates that's a completely different calculation so I'm just uh, which I'll show you another day but we're just sticking with uh, a very popular traditional uh, soak away method all right so let me get straight into this let me grab my pens here okay so first of all obviously you must have somewhere in mind where you're going to locate or in any store your septic tank once you've put your tank in or you've worked out the proposed location of where the septic tank is going you then need to do this Wherever the outlet pipe of the septic tank is going to be located, right, you just need to dig a small hole underneath the outlet pipe. Simple, right? Now, the size of the hole is quite small, believe it or not. It's 300 mil, millimeters by 300 by 300 by 300. So it's basically a hole 300 millimeter squared. That's it. It's as simple as that. So dig your little hole. Once you've done that, you then fill right, the hole up with water. So the water should fill up the hole and the tide mark should just be below the lip of the outlet pipe of the septic tank. Then basically you leave it for 24 hours, right? So you leave it for 24 hours and hopefully when you come back, the water will have all drained away. Now when I say hopefully, what I mean by that is there's certain uh, <laughs> times of the year where you don't want to uh, carry out this test that I'm showing you. So for example, say it's rained for the last two or three days and, and the ground's waterlogged and saturated, then you wouldn't do this test then because it would give you a false reading. So you'd wait until you had two or three, four uh, dry days, then you could carry the test out, right? Okay, so you've come back the next day, the hole's now empty, which is great. So, then you just fill the hole up with water again. Now, this hole here, once you've filled it with water, you've then literally got to imagine that it's broken up. Into four slices four components right and each of those slices represents 75 mil so it's 300 in total deep and if we break up into four four quarters four segments there each of those slices represents 75 mil so why is that important well it's important because you wait until the first 75 mil of water has drained away don't time it just wait for it so what i do i have little markers in the hole so uh, tide, tide marks so you can work out when the water has drained to the required depth. So once the water has drained away 75 mil and it's now here, the water level is there, you now need to get your stopwatch out, right? And start the time. Because then what you do is you work out the time or you time the time <laughs> in which it takes the water in the hole to drain away, oops, to drain away 150 mil, which represents two of those 75 mil slices, all right? So you time the time that it takes for the water to drain away, so then all that you're left with is 75 mil. Now, whatever figure you have, you would have your figure in seconds so let's say you've done your stopwatch and the time that it's taken to drain 150 mil equals right let's say it is 4,000 seconds right it took to drain away 
That's a very important figure and I'm going to show you what you do with that figure now, okay? All right, so then we go over to here, right? Because what you've just done is called a VP calculation or a percolation test, right? And um, basically, what we're going to do now, we're going to work out a little calculation based on 4,000 seconds there, which will give us a figure. And I'm going to show you how that figure comes into play in a minute. So you've got some question marks here, right? So let's rub out this question mark. So here is the uh, drainage time, the DT time, the time, the time it took to drain 150 mil. All right, so we, we've got 4,000 seconds there. So we put the figure of 4,000 there, and then we divide it by 150. So let me get my calculator out here. So this is live, so <laughs> my, my maths I learned all those years ago, you know, kicks in now. So here we go. So we've got 4,000 seconds, right, divided by 150. If you're wondering where the 150 comes from, this is a government calculation, so it's a set standard, okay? So you've got 4,000, uh, let me do that again, 4,000 divided by 150 equals 26.6. So let's say 27 for argument's sake. Right, so that gives us a VP figure of, wait for this, oh, let me get my pen here, wait for this, 27. So 4,000 seconds there equals a VP number of 26.6 seconds. So for argument's sake, right, for argument's sake, I can find my board rubber here, let's call, let's round that 26.6 off to 27. All right, so hopefully you're with me so far. Now that figure is very important because if you look here, this is, I suppose, a VP chart, percolation chart. So if that figure, right, had been 15 or below, it would mean that the water was draining away too fast. Like say for example, you're on chalk or you're on sand and the water's draining away too fast and the environmental agency may want to uh, examine your site more closely that the aquifers or other water sources weren't in risk of being polluted, right? So if your figure had been 15 or lower, then that would be too fast, and that's not good. That, okay, so that's not good. All right, if it had been 99 or higher, right, that would show that the water's hardly draining away at all. So, you know, if the, if the water is coming out of your house into the septic tank and into the drain field quicker than it's soaking away, then that could present a big problem. It could mean that, you know, it's going to overflow, it's going to back up to the house and the drainage field, the soak away, just will not do its job. But in this instance, in this instance, the figure 27 is below the 15 and the 99, so it's in the sweet spot. So we're going to give that a big fat tick there. Can we see that? Yeah, I was just looking on the monitor to see if you can, if the tick's off the screen. Okay, so that's step one done. We've got a figure here, look, of 27. I'm now going to show you how to work out the size of your drainage field. And it's all based on this figure, basically. Right, so the government have got a basic, um, again, set formula here, foolproof formula to help you work out the square meterage of your drainage field. So, you've got your house, you've got your septic tank in, you've got your VP figure, what other figures do you need? Well, how many people are gonna be living in your house? So, typical rule of thumb is two people per bedroom. If you, if you work roughly on that principle, you won't go far wrong. So, let's say that you've got a two bedroom house, we're allowing two people per bedroom, so that would be four people, right? All right, so let's get rid of that question mark. And we'll put four people here. There's four people going to be living in the house using the septic tank. Now the, we get the number four. Now we times it by the VP figure. Here's your VP figure we got before, 27. So let's put 27 in there. And there we go. We're almost there. So let me get my calculator. All right. So here we go. Just get your trusty calculator. Number of people that are going to live in the house. Well, we've got four, right? We times that by 27, which is your VP figure. So four times 27 equals 108. Then we times it by 0 0.25, times 0 0.25 gives us 27. So 
in answer to that the size of the area for your soak away would be 27 square meters there you go that was simple wasn't it how simple was that right so in another video I'll show you how that translates to the number of pipes and the configuration you can use and the amount of gravel but the point being is you've now got a basic floor plan to see whether you've got enough space to put your soak away in there and um, you can also then base your costings on on uh, on on you know the amount of pipes you need the amount of gravel you need etc so there you go that's how to work out right the size of a drainage field or soak away all right so there you go thank you very much for watching this live broadcast today um if you want to see more of me or <laughs> then just go onto google and type in septic tank tv but listen as i said thank you very much for watching i hope this video uh, has helped and i'll speak to you soon and if you subscribe right now, you'll have a chance to win a free bucket of soak away worms.